so today we're going to be talking about a simple trade. And this is what we trade in our trade room. And uh, we're going to expand on what we talked about in the Ninja Trader event last Thursday. So uh, a lot of discussion uh, about um, order flow and about volume spread analysis on Thursday. We're going to talk about the rest of the system uh, today. Thank you, Keith. But first, <clears throat> let's go uh, talk about the the uh, required disclosure. That is that we uh, uh, are here only for uh, educational purposes. Don't try to copy what we do. Um, that and there is uh, inherent risk. Don't risk any capital that you can't afford to lose. Because according to history, most traders do lose money. And uh, so the expectation is you will lose money also. So don't trade with any money that you cannot afford to lose. So that's basically what all this says. And f past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay, so. So here's what we want to do. We want to <coughs> show you. A very simple trade that is, when I say simple, I'm not saying easy because you've already found out day trading is not easy. But there are ways to go about simplifying something that all of us already know is not really easy. Okay. So what we've done is we've kind of gone inside of each bar we're looking at each and every tick that comes in and how it relates to the previous ticks that come in and when we have a certain pattern of characteristics of things that are happening we can anticipate that something specific is about to change and typically that's the direction of price okay but not necessarily a reversal all we need is an edge right that's all anybody needs in day trading is an edge so we've identified this edge and this is what we exploit every day in our trade room so like for here we have four different trade setups trade set trade opportunities for us right there and the the entry for those four setups is on the open of the bar with the rock star on it. That's our rock star indicator. So we would enter on the open of that bar or better. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So I say it's a simple trade. Well, how simple am I talking about? So it's as simple as a bouncing ball. Now, when I ask you, what happens when you drop a ball uh, onto a floor? What happens? Your answer is probably going to be, it's going to bounce. Right? So, that seems to make logical sense. And a lot of day trading on the surface seems to make sense when you just watch it and you're like, okay, all I need to know is when price is going to change directions. But there, there are more influences on the markets that you need to know and understand so that you can anticipate what's about to happen like a bouncing ball. Now, do all balls always bounce? Well, it depends. There's some things you need to know, right? What's the ball made of? Is it is it made out of steel? Uh, is it made out of a balloon? Is it you know uh, uh, got is it filled with sand or is it filled with rubber or is it filled with water? Um, how much air pressure might be in it? How high is the ball dropped from? Is it dropped from half an inch off the floor? Or is it dropped from 10 feet up? You know, and is it dropped or is it thrown down? 
Okay, so all of these things matter. But if you know those things, then you have an advantage. Okay, like what's the flooring made out of? Is it a concrete floor? Uh, is it sand? Is it rubber mats? Is it okay? So just holding a ball in your hand because you have a life experience of of understanding these things, right? You understand uh, what dropping a steel ball into a uh, you know, sand is going to do. You already know this from your experience. So this is what we're talking about with, with our trading, with this simple trade. We need to know what the bars are made of. We need to know what the bottom looks like before price turns, changes directions. Okay. So that's what we're measuring. That's what we're looking at. And if we know those things based on experience, we know what to anticipate to happen next. Okay. So even though this can seem like uh, very complicated and it, and it is when it comes to doing the math on a bouncing ball, but from our experiences, from our personal experiences, we can pretty much know and understand what's going to happen when certain conditions exist. So all we got to do is say, okay, well, the ball needs to be made out of rubber and it needs to be dropped from at least three or four feet and it needs to hit a concrete floor. When all of those conditions exist, this ball is going to bounce, and it's going to bounce roughly this high at least, maybe higher. This is all we're doing. This is simplifying something that a lot of people get, you know, you can, man, you can complicate trading, can't you? Can't we all complicate trading? Haven't we gone out of our way almost to make it really complicated? And we're gathering lots and lots of information and not really knowing and understanding why we're gathering that information. Okay. So with us, instead of measuring uh, what the ball is made of and the size of the ball and the weight of the ball and the, and the flooring and you know, what all of this other stuff for, for, for uh, trading and with price, we're going to measure volume, volatility, order flow, um, the strength so that we can anticipate exhaustion, uh, where the floor is, like so support and resistance levels, uh, divergence, when price and momentum have gone separate directions. So we measure all of this so we're, we're able to know what's going to happen next, like right now, okay? So it's a simple process. We've got this boiled down to an extremely simple process for us to take trades. And it's not like, well, when all of these things suddenly come together, then you have a trade set up and, and, and that sounds very confusing. So you're having, you feel like you're having to watch five, six, seven different indicators all at once, but you're not. It's a process and it's a qualifying process. It's, it's very simple. It's something you can easily practice and then identify during the heat of the moment while you're trading. Other trading systems I tried so long ago were, were not procedural and, and then it left me confused most of the time. Lots of shades of gray. You know, maybe I would have three or four conditions uh, that kind of were okay, and then two conditions that were right on, and three conditions that were were off. Um, and uh, I just never knew if I was doing the right thing. But here's our procedural process. So we're looking for a specific condition. If that condition exists or it does not exist, if it does not exist while we're just sitting there watching the charts, what do we do? We wait. We just wait. 
if it does exist, then we go and look for condition number two. And if it doesn't exist, then we go back to waiting. And then, okay, so condition one and condition two are in place. Now let's look for condition number three. And so on and so on. Okay? So you don't have to understand what all of the indicators are doing all of the time and try to figure out if you have a valid confluence. And the nice thing about this is that you can uh, practice this and get so good at it, you know exactly when to execute a trade because it's second nature. All you have to do is react. So that's what our practicing is all about is knowing when to react and to do it automatically. I, uh, I When I played football back uh, in the olden days, our coaches had us on the last game of the season. We were doing running the basic plays over and over and over again during warm-ups, right? The same plays over and over and over so that when you got in the heat of the moment, you didn't have to think about what you were supposed to do. You knew what to do because it was automatic. That's why we practice this, okay? So decision-making is, is not what it is for a lot of you and what it was for me as to wondering if a trade qualified and then talking yourself into a trade so I would sit there and I would wonder, okay, does this qualify as a setup? And some of those trading systems were so complicated. And the and the 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 guy, whoever I was listening to at the time, whoever system it was, or trade room moderator or guru or whoever I was following at the time, and he would say, "Oh yeah, the, see, can't you see it plainly qualifies?" And I'm looking at the, his logic, and I don't understand any of it. So I thought I, I was constantly nervous about whether I did it right. Should I have entered this trade? And I never had a, a a good understanding of not only what to do but why I was doing it. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about this and and uh, we're gonna talk about this confluence of market conditions that can get us into trade setups. Okay. So here's a typical trading chart. No indicators, no nothing actionable here. No other information other than high, low, open and close of each bar, right? Would you agree? Now, we need some underlying information. Remember the bouncing ball. We need to know what each bar is made of. We need to understand what's going on in the market. Now, do I have to analyze all of this each each and every time? No, because we have technical indicators that'll do that for us. So all we need to do is to apply technical indicators to tell us what is currently happening. So we've got this. Our, this is our MoMeter indicator. You see how the bars are turning uh, are black. And as the as the move progresses, these bars are going from black to a lighter gray to a lighter gray to almost white. So the the stronger the momentum, the lighter the bar, the more likely the exhaustion. All right. So it's like a runner. How long can this guy run up? This? Of course, this guy can run up this hill <laughs> indefinitely forever. But if this was an actual video, how long do you think he could run that hard up that hill before becoming exhausted and either starting to run slower or having to sit down and rest or turn around and go back down? All right. So we need to measure momentum so we can anticipate exhaustion. So that's our meter indicator. Then we have our FT reset or our first touch. 
which is what we use for support and resistance. And I call it first touch because it was the first uh, pullback trade I ever traded. And it was when price approaches a line in a strong fashion like this. See, this is not a strong fashion, right? This is not strong. This is strong. And it slams into a line of resistance and gets knocked back, okay? So that's our support and resistance. And, and we have this relative strength number at the end to tell us to anticipate if we approach it strong like this, to anticipate that there is going to be a strong reaction to that line, okay? Or we can expect there to be a strong reaction to that line, but only if it approaches this way, okay? The higher the number, the more likely the reaction if it approaches in a strong way like this, okay? Next indicator, our overbought, oversold indicator. This is actually one of my favorites. When price becomes overbought or oversold, what happens? Exhaustion is setting in. It's likely to change directions. So instead of having an oscillator down at the bottom of our charts uh, to tell us if price is overbought or oversold, we put all the information right on the bar. This, this is an overbought condition. This is an oversold condition, right? So it tells us when to expect for that exhaustion to be setting in. BTIC indicator. Okay, so this is orders being processed through the exchange. And, and so that's what we're measuring constantly. On every tick that comes through, every single tick, we're watching to see how fast the orders are being processed. And if they're being processed at a rate that's unlikely to be retail traders, then it's got to be the big money guys. This is how we know what they're doing. And if we know what they're doing, as we talked about on uh, Thursday, then we know what to expect to happen next. Okay, so you see the, <laughs> the orders are being processed really fast here. And it's, it's more than this guy can deal with. Uh, this is just pretty much basic, like whatever, right? We're really not interested in this. So as soon as we see that big money is manipulating, it has our attention. That doesn't mean take a trade, but it has our attention. All right, the pullback alert indicator. So we talked about this uh, in, uh, on Thursday. This indicator tells us that when, you know, we have a bar that uh, maybe there's a whole lot of buying going on and the, the sellers are just standing up there waiting for the buyers to get to them. And the buyers, as they're just about to get exhausted, the sellers jump in and they start duking it out. Except the, the sellers are not tired. They're not exhausted. They've been. They've just got resting orders, just waiting for the very tired uh, buyers to get there. And then, typically, what happens is the sellers come in, and the buyers uh, punch themselves out, and then price changes directions. So that's what we do. That's what the pullback alert uh, indicator is doing. We have our ricochet indicator, which is really a byproduct of the speed tick indicator, but Speed tick, you kind of think of more as a speedometer and highest rate of speed that that it can go. Um, the ricochet is acceleration. So even though we, we may not get a uh, speed tick on a particular bar because it didn't reach a certain uh, speed, we, can, we often get uh, the ricochet because... Orders went from just kind of clicking along to suddenly taking off, okay? They just uh, uh, zero to 100 in like half a second. 
So we're interested in that because very, very often we will get a pullback after that. Our divergence indicator, super D, um, this is really the indicator uh, or di adding divergence to our pullback trades was really the thing that really got us, uh, you know, put us on the map. We were doing just fine doing the regular pullback trades, but as soon as we started adding divergence back in, and that's what the super D is, it's seven different Diver, uh, uh, momentum oscillators and when price and momentum diverge meaning price is going one way and momentum is going the other price as you can see from the little <laughs> from the little video price wants to stop and change and and catch up with momentum so knowing the knowing this that if if we have diverged and price is going one way, we know there's a really good chance that momentum, uh, that price is going to uh, uh, try to catch up with momentum. And in, in order to do that, it's got to change directions. All right, then we have our rock star. This is a an indicator that has a... a ability to combine a com uh, the confluence of the OBOS indicator, the speed tick indicator, and the super D indicator. This is our trigger. Because of that added divergence to the speed tick and to OBOS, overbought, oversold, we now use this as our trigger on the open of the bar that it prints on. This star always prints on the open of this bar, okay? As soon as it opens, if the condition exists, that's where our decision is made, okay? So this is a confluence of our indicators and what it looks like. Now, <clears throat> remember, that's a step-by-step -step qualifying process. So what did I say? Okay, first, we're going to break out of a channel, and we've got a strong momentum. Okay, good. I'm paying attention. And we've got an overbought condition. Okay, I'm paying attention. Now, suddenly, this bar shows that the orders are being processed very fast, and it's unlikely this is being done by retail traders. Okay, I'm paying attention still. We've got our pullback alert. The buyers and sellers are duking it out. The buyers are getting tired. The sellers are not tired. And they have a lot more punching power. Okay? And price accelerated. I mean, the order, the rate of the order flow accelerated quickly beyond what was going on in these bars. All right? Oh, and we have resistance. Meaning that if price uh, hits up in here uh, and it has... Uh, hit right at the edge of this zone, uh, which is part of the resistance, then chances are it's going to have a hard time breaking through. All right? And then the open of this bar, we shorted it. All right? So that was the qualifier. So you notice it's a step-by-step -step process. So <clears throat> let me use another analogy for you. So let's say you want an opinion on something. And this is pretty important. This is a very important thing. And you go and ask one person that has a particular skill um, or their, you know, their uh, a, a particular background that makes them an expert on part of whatever it is you're asking them about. Maybe you're thinking about buying a house in a certain area. And so you're going to ask the realtor, do you think this is a good idea? You go, um, sure. Yeah. Good idea. So, okay, so you got one person. What if you went and asked a whole bunch of other people with different skills, you know, maybe they're community organizers or maybe they're members of the Chamber of Commerce or maybe they're, uh, they, they are on the uh, planning committee for the, the neighborhood or, or maybe they're, I don't know, your congressman or something, but people that have 
other pieces of information that might be critical to making a decision. Would you rather make a decision based on just that one guy who's a nice guy and he's credible? Or would you rather make a decision based on asking lots and lots and lots of different people who have dis- different backgrounds and different expertise and different life experiences coming together to agree strongly with each other that something bad is going to happen in this neighborhood or something really good is about to come to this neighborhood that'd be good for you. Okay. That seems pretty simple. The more people the app you ask, the more data you acquire that point in a particular direction, the better you can make good decisions. Okay. So this is our qualifying process. Okay. So we've got, um, indicators. Now this, we say, Oh, we got a confluence of indicators. Well, it didn't qualify for a trade for this particular trade. We, you don't see a rock star, right? So we just sit and wait and there's our rock star. Now we have a confluence of conditions. We have prices channeling breaks out of that channel. Notice the mo meter. Okay, so this is going to happen, you know, pretty early on. Then we got an oversold condition. Then we got a, a a speed tick. Okay, we're qualifying this. I'm watching. Okay, everything's looking good, but no trade. But this trade now we got even more momentum, speed tick, and this bar opened with a rock star. There's our there's our trade. So you put on an order. Now, when I say you want to get in on the open of this bar, a lot of times you can get in at an even better price down here. So you'll hear me say that in the trade room. I got a better price. And so you take that trade. Chances are it's going to go at least a few ticks in our direction. Not always, but usually most of the time. And then what happens is price will, may just break down into a range again. And this is typical. This is, this, and go look at any chart. And I say this all the time. Go pull up any time-based chart and you'll see this exact pattern repeated over and over and over again. So the nice thing is, is because it's repeated so often, it's, pre, it's predictable. And if it's predictable, then we have an edge, right? So you see what's happening here on each bar. We're getting information to say, hey, pay attention. Okay. Got a channel here. Price breaks out of the channel. We have a speed tick saying, okay, price is really flying through the exchange right now. Retail traders aren't doing that. Got to be the big boys. Oh, now price is overbought. So exhaustion should be setting in. Oh, we're slamming into resistance. So if exhaustion is setting in, what's the likelihood it has the strength to break through the resistance? Oh, the pullback alert is telling us there's a churning activity inside this bar. The buyers and sellers are fighting it out. And this is likely a blow off bar or a climax bar meaning there are no more shares to sell or, or contracts to sell or to buy. So now we've got divergence. Divergence tells us, oh, uh, well, price is still going up, but momentum has already changed directions. Momentum's actually heading down. So price is going to try to catch up with momentum. All right? It's simple. See, it's a simple trade, isn't it? I'm not making this. And it may seem complicated to you, but that's only because it's new. After watching it just a little bit, you'll you'll understand and know better why that uh, this is such a simple trade. Okay? So, confluence. Yes, we're channeling. We break out of a channel. Price gets overbought. We have the orders going through really fast which means the big boys are involved, which means we're going to just wait 
cool our heels and let the market do what it's going to do. And then we react to that. Okay. So we have all of this agreement that something is about to change. Right? Something is about to happen. So this is what that that pull that uh, process looks like specifically with our trades. Okay, breaking out of a channel. If if the answer is no, then we wait. Okay. Do we have a strong move? If the answer is no, then we wait. You know, price can break out of a channel, but when just kind of drift up here and drift down here and just kind of drift around. But if it breaks out in a strong way, and you can tell because these bars are going to be much bigger than this, the bars in the channel. If we don't, break out of that channel with a strong move, then we wait. And if it does, we start looking for a strong potential for exhaustion. Okay, we got that. We got the pullback alert and we got our overbought uh, condition on this bar. If we don't have that, then guess what we do? <laughs> we And we do a lot of this. I mean, if you if you really have confidence in your trading system, you're not looking for trades to get into. You're paying attention to and waiting for the confluence of conditions that you have a lot of faith in. And when they're not there, you're perfectly happy sitting and waiting because when you have an edge like we do, and I'll show you this in a minute, you don't mind waiting. All right, so has this been manipulated? Has, has the bar been manipulated? If it hasn't, if we don't have a speed tick, there's no trade. You'll hear me say in the trade room often, nothing happens without a speed tick. You can have all the other stuff, but if you don't have a speed tick, there's no trade. All right? We slam into support and resistance. If there's no support or resistance there, then we have one more thing uh, to qualify. And that is, does it qualify as a naked trade setup? Okay, so naked comes from the fact that, that this resistance line uh, is not protecting or covering this, this trade, you know, as a, you know, kind of a helper to keep tr the price from, going against us so we do have setups where we don't have to have that line but it does have to qualify for a naked trade setup we have two naked rock star and naked speed tick okay so if it qualifies if it does not qualify then we wait if it does qualify as naked then yeah, we're just looking for a uh, rock star on the open of the next bar, right? I mean, this is a pretty simple qualifying process. Again, after you've done it a few dozen times, you'll get it. It's not hard, but you do have to work at it. Okay, that's where you would execute the trade would be right at the open of that bar. All right, let's see what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like on an actual chart, what the actual trades look like. Uh, I'm going to start this. So, uh, yeah, it's inside the uh, the uh, indicator uh, per, uh, properties. You can set an alert for it if you want. All right. So notice, okay, channeling, breaking out of this channel, price drops, opens with a rock star. This is where you would get in. Or better, remember, if it drops here, say you were like a little slow in identifying it. Oh, well, I could still enter this. So if I got in here, 
I would do, I would get an even better price. Right? Price is channeling, breaks out of this channel. Look at the size of this bar. Okay, we ha it's manipulated. It's overbought. We've got a speed tick. Now, we had a rock star on the open of this bar. It didn't work out, but this, uh, let's see. Not all of these are winners, by the way. I just, I just grabbed a bunch of trades. Yeah, this one actually did work out, but it took some heat. It hit that resistance. Yeah, so the the point of this was that we want to see this resistance and show how it can bounce off the resistance. All right, I don't remember all these trades, so I'll just uh, watch them with you. But look at this channel, and then it blasts out of this channel, takes off. Now what, look at the moon meter. It's going from black to a darker gray to a lighter gray, and we're pushing down here. We do have a line of support here. Now it's oversold, and we have a speed tick. So I'm watching this, and I'm just sitting, and I'm waiting. And there's our rock star, so I put on a buy order there. There was an opportunity to get a better fill, right? So people, a lot of people are like, oh, it moves so fast. I could never move that fast. You don't have to move fast. You have to be deliberate, okay? You have to know what you're going to do and and then go about doing it. If you're too fast sometimes like this, this open and jump straight up. You might have missed this trade. So that's fine. We'll have more. No, five ticks. Uh, a tick is the smallest movement of price. All right, so every time this bar moves, it's moving a tick. So we're looking for five ticks in one direction that's it that's all and we do that for a number of reasons not the least of which is to get in and out quickly because the markets are a terrible place to put your money there there are a lot of influences in the markets that are much better at taking money than you are at trading so the idea is you want to reduce your exposure and get out of the markets quickly not just for the fact that um, you know, it's a bad place to have the money, but it's also a stressful environment. When your money is at risk, it's stressful. So we can show the same thing over and over and over again. And if you have questions about it, um, when we get to the end, I'll show you, you know, we can go back to that. So this is what we do. We trade pullbacks from a breakout. I showed you the you know, when price is channeling and breaking out. We measure strength because strength, we all know that, no, you, you place the order at the open of the bar. You don't place it five ticks away. You place it at the open of the bar. And you can do that with a, you want to start out with limit orders. Because the worst thing that happens with a limit order is it doesn't get picked up and you end up not getting filled and it goes to target and you didn't get the trade, which is not a bad thing in trading. You'd rather that happen than for you to uh, get into something and it goes against you. So you use a limit order. You put it on whatever the price is at the open of the bar or better. And then it'll pick up your order, and now you're looking for it to go that five ticks. So remember, we're measuring strength to anticipate weakness. We're identifying the market manipulation so we can anticipate other people's reactions. Okay? We're looking at usually less than a minute in a trade. If a trade goes more than two minutes, uh, we're, we're like ready to be done. So what happens is uh, once you put your order on and it gets picked up and it goes to your target, 
it automatically fills at your target. So we use what's called a bracket order. So every time you place an order to buy uh, or sell, whatever, you will have a target and a stop predefined. So all you have to do is just place your order and, and the ATM that you have set up with your predefined target and stop will handle the rest of it for you. You could still manage it uh, if you want to, and we do. But uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about once you put in the trade, then knowing exactly when to get out. It's all preset. So we have, we never have huge winning days or huge losing days. Okay. So we like to limit our losses and we're focused on the execution and trade management. That's the most important part. We already have an edge. The edge is well-defined. We've been doing this since 2009. That's 15 years, folks. So the edge is very well-defined. But the one thing that some people don't like about this edge that we enjoy is that it takes practice to get good at it. So if you want to be a pro golfer, but you don't want to practice, you should probably find something else to do. If you want to be a professional musician, but you don't want to practice, go find something else to do. If you want to be a professional day trader, but you don't want to practice, you should probably find something else to do. Okay. This is how you get good at anything ever. You're not born to knowing how to do this, but you can practice it and get good at it. We never move our stops or our targets outwards. And I, whenever I manage a trade, I never move my target. I will always manage it with my stop. And, and it's really like I showed you the, the system. The, it's ready, aim, fire. Ready, watching price, aim, all the 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 pieces of the of the system are coming together we have a confluence bar opens with a with a rock star we fire okay it's that simple and we use one minute charts and it works on forex and futures and and it, it'll work on stocks also um if they have enough liquidity so yeah we have a five tick target and a seven tick stop like I said, we'll manage our stop oftentimes to be less than seven ticks. Like I managed uh, yesterday, I had a trade. I think I managed it to minus three. But if you still don't see it, only five ticks. Well, how do you make money at five ticks? Well, initially, you're not going to make much. But what you're going to do is you're going to start to gain experience. And with that experience, and, and you start to build confidence, All right? So let's look at a chart here, and, and we're looking at what happens if you're trading and you're just going for five ticks, okay? And, and a single trade, you could do, you know, if you've got three or four lots that you're trading, eventually, you know, that's, that's not bad. That's not bad because you're also not risking as much either. So you're building confidence as you start increasing your lots traded. So yeah, uh, Keith was nice enough to put up the audited results for us. Yes, we trade futures, but you can use it for futures or Forex. Either one. We trade futures in our trade room. But we have a lot of Forex traders that buy our stuff as well. So we have some results of our trade room trades, all right, using that, uh, there's the, the chart that I just showed you. So we have this, this data that we've been collecting since 2020. And here's the data and here's all the, 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 the number of trades and the hours we trade and all that. The data that we use to come up with this um, uh, spreadsheet of our wins and losses, and uh, subtracting out uh, the fact that we do manage our losses sometimes. 
So we average all this out, and it comes to almost 80% winning trades. All right? Not bad, huh? So for a single contract, after, sub after subtracting out all of our losses from the wins, after subtracting out all the fees that are included in trading, looking at like $150,000, okay, per single contract. Now, ideally, what you're going to do is as you start getting good at this, you start adding contracts, okay? You start adding, and then as, as you get good at it, then you can see there's, you know, you can make money at this. So the five tick thing is really, it's very important. And you can, you, you know, and you don't have to learn new things. And it's still much easier on your emotions than if you're trying to go for 10, 20, 30, 50 ticks, right? And that's where a lot of traders struggle. That's where I struggled a lot for a long time was my emotions and allowing my head to do or my emotions to overrule what I knew what I was supposed to be doing. Now, I could show you a whole bunch more trades, and we could do that later if uh, you want to see more after we get to the end. But now remember, simple is not easy, meaning you don't just turn this on and walk away. Simple means that the process is simple, but you've got to do the work to get good at it. And the work we define in our fast forward program, we have a training program. So you know exactly what to work on, exactly how to work on it. And we give you tools to work on it with, okay, to help with that. We also have a, a daily trade room that comes with our pro trader program. It's all part of the uh, pro trader we do mentoring in the trade room. Um, we have training videos. We have a uh, a a uh, mentoring program that uh, where where you will help to mentor a your um, your accountability buddy. So it's a peer mentoring program. Um, and we're always here to have to provide you with support. We'll come onto your computer set everything up for you. If you gets messed up, we'll come back and we'll help you out with it and get it all set up and working right for you. If you're in the, uh, whoops, pro trader program. All right. And Keith put this up there already for you. If you want more information and you want to see, uh, more about what we were talking about today, we have, like I said, been at this for 15 years. So we have a lot of videos uh, that you can watch. And the funny thing is, so, so specifically, I could show you more trades, but you could go watch these trade of the day videos. And once you've, and they're only a couple minutes long, so you could watch a bunch of them. But once you've watched some of these and you watch about 10 of them, you'll start to notice, wow, it's the same thing over and over and over again. We haven't changed in 15 years. You can go back and look at <laughs> and look at trades that we took 10 years ago. I think I have some that are that old in there. And you'll notice it's the same thing that we're doing today. So why would we change it? I, I always wondered why when I was going, I was in a trade room and I, of course I was a horrible trader failing, couldn't. Couldn't, I could never get any traction, but I was always looking for more and more and more. So um, I would go and I'd join a trade room. And within the first month I was there, they were changing things. Oh, yeah, Chris, I think I have you uh, on the uh, to call to uh, contact next week. Yeah, we were going to do that. I, I, I was busy getting ready for this this week, but yeah, we'll do that next week. 
Chris is in our pro trader program and he needs uh, help getting set up again. So I am going to remote onto his computer and set everything up for him. All right. So watch those trade of the day videos and you'll see everything that I showed you today and how consistent we are with what we do and we have been for 15 years. That makes learning a lot easier when it doesn't keep changing. You know, that's what I was saying in the trade rooms that I used to go to. It's like I'm there a month and they're already changing stuff. They're adding stuff or they're saying, oh, here's the, here's the secret stuff that we didn't show you before, but we're going to show you now. You just got to keep buying more stuff from us, more and more and more. Well, with our pro trader program, there's nothing else to buy. Everything that we develop later down the road, you get it free. It's all part of it. Um, once you're in the pro trader program, the only other thing to buy is if you want to put more your indicators on more than a one computer. There is a, an upcharge for multiple computers, but you don't even have to do that. Um, I don't. I don't even when I travel. I don't even have the indicators on my laptop. I I uh, remote onto my workstation back at home, and I do it that way. So I just. Uh, and as long as I have a good connection on each end, you don't have to have the indicators on your laptop if you're traveling. You can, but it costs a little bit more. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we're going to offer you guys a 20% off uh, on these programs. Uh, if you're not quite ready, you want to kind of dip your toe in and kind of fiddle around a little and kind of see what it's all about, then we have couple of programs for you where you can do that or if you're ready to just dive in and get serious about your trading uh we have our pro trader program which ultimately most of the people that you'll see in the trade room if you want to come do a trial in the trade room most of the people there are in our pro trader program um you can also come to a trial and ask them lots of questions if you want to uh certainly ask me questions i'm the one with the microphone but everybody else can type in and whatever so we just want to offer you guys a nice discount to get you started. Uh, you can contact us at the intention. Uh, what am I? Support at the intentional trader.com. I think Keith has probably put that up there somewhere, but if he didn't, I bet he's about to. <laughs> Keith does not work for us. Keith is just an awesome guy who, who does goes a little bit extra and shows up to these events and, makes it easier on me by posting links that are important. So I appreciate Keith a lot for doing that. But give us a, a you know, a contact us and let us know if there's any way we can help you. We'd love for you to get started with us and uh, come to the trade room, hang out with us and trade with us every day. So that being said, do we have any questions? Wow. No questions. All right. Well, everybody have a great rest of your weekend or beginning of your weekend. And I hope to see you all very soon. Have a great one. Bye now.